The syntax is tortured. The grammar is mutilated. But the message, sent by snail mail, telex, fax, or email, is coherent. The African bigwig or his heirs wish to transfer funds amassed in years of graft and venality to a safe bank account in the West. They seek the recipient's permission to make use of his or her inconspicuous services for a percentage of the loot, usually many millions of dollars. A fee is required to expedite the proceedings, or to pay taxes, or to bribe officials, they plausibly explain in the missive. A recent variant involves payment with expertly forged postal money orders for goods exported to a transit address. This scam is three or four decades old and still works. In September 2002, a bookkeeper for a Berkeley, Michigan law firm embezzled $2.1 million and wired the funds to various bank accounts in South Africa and Taiwan. Other victims were kidnapped for ransom as they traveled abroad to collect their share. Some never made it back. Every year, there are five such murders as well as 8 to 10 snatchings of American citizens alone. The usual ransom demanded is half a million to a million dollars. The scam is so widespread that the Nigerians saw fit to explicitly ban it in Article 419 of their penal code. The Nigerian president castigated the fraudster for inflicting incalculable damage to Nigerian businesses and for placing the entire country under suspicion.